Hello everyone, today we are going to explore the least visited capital city in Europe. Welcome to Tirana. Tirana is the largest and capital city of Albania. It is besides the least visited city in Europe, also one of the wettest and sunniest cities of Europe. It has a strong history and that is what we are going to explore first and we will find that in its bunkers. And another experience in Tirana is to visit one of the 175,000 bunkers. You can visit two, and this is Bank Art 1. So we walk through the entrance of the bunker, three doors thick concrete and metal, all to prevent explosions from entering the building, but also nuclear waste or any chemicals to enter the building. Then you have the decombination room, where you take a shower, take off your clothes, throw your clothes away to make sure you don't bring any chemicals into the bunker. And the first room that you see is Enver Hoxha's room, which is the biggest one in the bunker, where he would sleep with his wife and kids. But in reality, he has never slept here. Also, only one of the few rooms that has a carpet and the only room that has fiber walls to show his important position in military command at that time. This place is huge. I think we are just on the first floor. And I think there are five floors here that I've heard before. But the first floor just gives you a good overview about the history of Albania, like when the Italians invaded and then the Germans invaded and then the other party took over and then another party took over, but it's a good way to get an understanding of the Albanian history. So wherever you walk in this bunker you'll find these boxes which were manufactured by the Chinese and the idea was if they ever have to close down this bunker completely and no oxygen would come through, these boxes would still be able to deliver some oxygen in the bunker. But to use this, there were certain pets that you had to put inside and you need to use gloves to put those pets in. So there's a kind of a doubt if this system was really healthy for you. Guess which room I entered now in this bunker. It's uh, the General Assembly Hall. I didn't expect to see such a huge room performance hall inside a bunker. It seems that the last floors are going much faster because not all the rooms here are decorated but we spent almost three hours like two and a half three hours to enter this bunker and if you really want to read everything in detail you can spend easily four till five hours in this. So this was bunk art one and let's see what the difference would be when we entered Bank R2, which is right in the city center of Tirana. And now we're going to explore Bank R2, which should give us more information about how the CIA secret services of this country would operate. We're now kind of halfway in the museum where in the beginning they explained in around 1913 time how the police got established here in Albania and then in 1944 were the first signs of the secret services. So far, I think Bank R2 is way more interesting how it's set up. It's warmer here as well. A bunker should be around 16 degrees all the time of the year, but here it seems pretty hot inside. But we'll continue our journey and I'll let you know what I really think about this bunker. So how long do you think it will take to become a spy photographer for the Albanian secret services? Well, apparently it's only five days and it takes you three days of theory class and then two days of practice in another country, which, I don't know, some Instagram courses are even longer than that. I'm just going to continue my fun little facts here and that is 
When you enter Albania as a foreigner during the communist time, of course you automatically got a stamp behind your name that you are suspected. But more funnily, there are some aesthetics rules that you have to adhere to when you enter the country. So from 1975, at the main border points, you will find barber shops, clothes shops to allow tourists to dress up in the accepted communist way. One of the three thick doors that protects you from the outside world when you enter a bunker. And you need to be very strong to move it. Open is okay, but closing it needs to be very strong. How thick? How thick? This thick. Like 30 centimeters, I think. So that's it for bank card two. If you want to visit those two bank cards together in Albania, you need to pay 800 lakh for a combi ticket, but you can also just visit one and pay a little bit less. Personally, I think bank card one is the must visit if you only have one choice or one option during your time in Tirana. That one gives you a little bit more explanation about the history and also about the functions of the different rooms in the bunker. But still, if you can only visit the one in the city center, I had fun with both of those rooms, but let's explore the rest of Tirana. After leaving the bunkers, we discovered that Tirana has more to offer. From Skanderburg Square, with the clock tower of Tirana, Opera Ballet Theatre and Atem Bay Mosque, to Murat Toptani Pedestrian Street, with a castle area converted to a shopping area. We also pass a bookstall on a bridge and there's Rage at the Cloud a modern art installation that I don't really understand, but there are sometimes movie screenings, which is great. It seems that Albania is trying to get rid of their history about the dictatorship and stuff and buildings that refer to the communism time as well. And that's where you can see the pyramid that's now almost gone as well, which was designed by Enver's Hoxha's daughter and former son-in-law in 1988. And they're going to turn this in a probably more complex, modern complex building. But yeah, it was based on pictures I saw before, maybe the most ugliest thing I've ever seen. So when you walk to Tirana, there's a lot of memories still about the communism dictatorship time, which was here between 1966 and 1990. There's, for example, a piece of the Berlin Wall that symbolizes the time that communism was here and was demolished in 1990 to end the communism time. And then if you look behind me, there is the official entrance to Enver Haksa's bunker, the dictator that was here. And according to locals here in Albania, they describe him as a psychopath, a maniac that built 170,000 of those bunkers, most of them all connected in case a nuclear bomb would strike the city. And then in the same area you will find those pillars, which were the support pillars of a mine shaft, used as a labor camp for people who were against the political view of this government. You would be a prisoner and would work in the mines. But it's difficult to imagine that 1990 is when this dictatorship ended, which was just before I was born, which is very strange that we now live in a free, open world, but this dictatorship only ended quite recently. And that was our trip from Montenegro to Albania, very unexpectedly. And it all started this change of plan due to COVID. And that's what I still need to do, a COVID test. I'm a bit scared of what's going to happen. Plop, plop, back to London. It was not plop, plop, it was plop deep in my nose. It's very uncomfortable. It's a burning feeling or something. I don't like those tests. Let's go home.